Before racing and show jumping, hunting was the popular sporting use for horses, and indeed it still is an integral part of the horse world. It's here that many people get bitten by the bug, the love of the horse. rolling plains of the Curragh County Kildare, known as the hub of Irish racing, with over 2,000 horses in training there. So where better to start a saddlery business? Kilcullen, on banks of the River Liffey, is that place. Burney Brothers were founded about 120 years ago by Peter Burney, just up the road from the present premises. Grandson Tom Burney, now 82 years young, still works there, looking in the main after the repairing side of the business. He started work at the age of 16 and says that he's enjoyed every day of it since. One of the things that gives him most pleasure at the moment is that there are three generations of Bernies now working there. This is since his grandsons, Jamie, Robert and Vincent, started to help out. The business is now run by his sons, Tom, who in the main looks after the saddle-making end. And the well-stocked shop comes under the supervision of Jim. The shop is frequented by most sections of the equestrian world, including people like dressage expert Diana Gilna and Jack Doyle, the Kerrygold International show jumper. While the saddle is the most complex and expensive item, the first bit of tack a horse meets is on his head. So where better to start than with the bridle? Ten different pieces are required for the normal bridle. These are cut from a sheet of plain leather with a gauge knife. The various pieces having been cut with a gauge knife, then they are marked up for the varying lengths and the round knife is used to trim them and shape the ends of them. Precision is, of course, vital, and a divider is used to mark the various points. The round knife here, being sharpened on the bench, is a vital part of the harness maker's equipment. The edges are then beveled to give a nice clean finish. The round knife again, just trimming a shape into the end of the reins. Pieces having been cut and shaped are then taken to be covered with a mixture made from dye and glue. The actual composition and formula of this is unique to Bernie's. Then comes a very vigorous process called rubbing up. This is just to get a nice, clean, hard shine on the leather. The creasing machine has a heated roller and its sole purpose is to put a nice edge on the reins and so add to the appearance of the finished bridle. There's that new bridle deck, she's all yours. Have you John Oxford head collars? Yeah, I have Jim then passes the pieces to Declan Clifford, whose grandfather, Pat Farrell, 
worked for old Tom Burney for about 70 years. Declan deals with the reins first. Sliding a rubber grip down over the leather. And this, of course, is to give a better grip for the rider, particularly in wet conditions, like in the hunting field. I didn't want to tell you. Then on to the machine for sewing. These machines have to be started by hand, but then can be kept going with a foot treadle. Most of the machines indeed of Bernie's are about 50 years old and still work as well today as they did when they were new. Any self-respecting harness maker will make his own thread. He takes the basic linen thread, stretches it and twists it. He then rubs it with a block of beeswax. This will help make the thread waterproof and also give it added strength after the final twisting across the apron. cheek pieces and the nose band are then stitched. At this point, it's just single stitching because there's not any great strain on these particular points. The device used for holding the pieces of leather together while stitching is called a clams. It's basically two pieces of wood sprung and held between the knees. This particular one here is about 40 years old and it's a very vital piece of equipment in the harness making craft. The clicking wheel here sinks holes along the edge of the leather where it's later going to be stitched. The stitching will actually lie down in these holes, again that nice finish being part of the object of the exercise. On points where there's particular strain, like here where the reins are being joined to the ring of the snaffle bit, double stitching will be used. For this, two needles are used, sewing in opposite directions, through holes made by the awl. The holes for the various buckles are then put in the leather, using an old-fashioned but most effective punch and mallet. A special chisel is then used to bevel off the edges to give that nice clean finish that comes on a handmade bridle. A touch of the glue and dye mixture just to finish off the edge. and a special chisel to round off the ends. The buckle at the back of the noseband is fitted in a slightly different way than normal. A piece of leather is in fact used, and this then, placed in the clams, is sewn by hand. The double stitching being used once more to give extra strength. The shape is then put on the keepers using this bit of stick and a hammer. The stick has been a long time in Bernie's, in fact no one can remember when it appeared first. All the sewing completed, the bridle is then assembled. First, the brow band fitted to the headpiece, and then the cheek piece with the bit attached, buckled on. The throat lash checked that the buckle fits there. And there you have a handmade basic bridle, the egg butt snaffle.
also to the saddle. The foundation of a saddle is the tree. This is made from steel and beech wood, and Tom Burney first checks that it's true and straight. He then starts into the first process, which is called webbing up. Flax linen is used, and this is fixed first with a tack to the high pommel point at the front of the saddle, and then fastened at the cantle, which is the back. This will form the basis of the seat of the saddle. It's thought that the first saddles used were in China. And these were during the Han Dynasty, about 200 BC. We're told that they were made from a framework of bone or metal with a fabric covering, not that far removed from what we use today. In the webbing up, some pieces are left long onto which the girt straps will be affixed later. Tom then trims away the surplus material. Glue is then used to fasten the flax webbing to the back of the saddle. It's pressed down by hand and again the surplus trimmed away. The saddle now begins to take shape and the master saddler knows just how much he has to leave to ensure a firm seat. These pieces are called bellies. They're tacked to the beechwood on the side of the seat of the saddle to give shape. The bellies will then be covered with a cork and adhesive compound. This will ensure a good firm side to the seat of the saddle. More adhesive is then used because the next process is the final one before the leather is eventually fitted. For this, serge used to be used, but in these days a high density foam material has been found more satisfactory. Tom then trims away the surplus, and here it's just the eye and the steady hand of the master saddler that's used. Next it's marked for where the skirt will be fitted later on. The surface is then roughed up, and this is to give a better contact with the leather, which will be introduced next. Tom then checks the leather for any flaws, doing this just by feel. The pattern is then laid down. These patterns are all Bernie's own special shapes. Any material will do, even a donkey derby poster. The leather is then soaked to make it soft and pliable. When wet, it's fitted to the seat. Tacked to the back and then strained and stretched. This must be done very precisely and carefully for if it's not done absolutely straight, the whole shape of the saddle will twist later on. The basic shape having been stretched into the leather 
Tom then marks the center line, which he'll need for a later stage. The pattern for the skirts is then affixed to the saddle, and here he'll mark this to know exactly where to cut at the next stage. The seat is then removed, and even still, you can see the shape that was stretched into it. Brendan Willis takes over then to make the skirts. These are cut to the same pattern as we saw Tom using to mark on the side of the seat. The leather is then skived along the edge. further treated then with a special chisel to make for a better fit and finish when the pieces are sewn together. With a special tool he also marks it for sewing. The skirt is then tacked to the lining then turns it over and using a different stitch prepares it for sewing to the actual seat of the saddle. Here we meet another Clifford. This is Gerard. He's a cousin of the man we saw earlier making the bridles. His job is to sew the skirt to the seat of the saddle and using small hand stitches gets that nice, fine, smooth edge. The skirt and the seat are then ready for fitting to the actual tree. With tacks, he secures it to the pommel, the high point of the front of the saddle. Some more trimming underneath. And then it's stretched and once more tacked to the underneath of the tree. nickel-plated screw is used to anchor it at the pommel. This is a bobbin for the sewing machines. Suede knee rolls are then sewn to the front of the side panels. This particular saddle being a general purpose or show jumping saddle. Once more, the chisel for skiving is used, again to achieve that close fit and finish. Tom then fits the side panels to the tree. They are pinned to the beech wood and tacked further back. The saddle now is taking very definite shape and the famous Bernie label is then fixed on. There you are, Yet another Clifford here, this is Brendan. He's going to make the girt straps. He first cuts them for length and then with a special chisel rounds off the ends. These of course must be particularly strong 
and for them, buffalo leather is used. They're fixed then by hand to the webbing, which we saw fitted at the very early stage across the top of the tree. The linings are then marked, using in this case an old lining as a pattern. The holes for the various places to stitch it to the saddle itself are marked. And then with a straight knife, he cuts the piece of leather. pocket is then stitched in, where the tree will actually sit into the lining and hold it secure to the saddle. We're now reaching the final stages of making the saddle. The linings are pinned down to the workbench, then they'll be trimmed and glued together. fitted into the saddle. The stubs off the tree fitting exactly into those pockets and will be tacked to the back of the seat. Then comes a process called stuffing. The synthetic wool is used and this is to fill the underneath of the saddle and the side panels. The wool must be put in in reasonably small quantities to stop it getting lumpy, and a stuffing iron is the tool used for this. It's pushed right up into the various areas it's required to fill, A tool called a masher is used to spread it and make sure it's firm and even. So the saddle is complete and Tom checks that the finished saddle is right up to standard. He tells us that they produce about 1500 bridles and 1000 handmade saddles every year. Their biggest seller is called the Dublin Showjumper Spring Seat. So there it is. Bernie's handmade saddle, bridles, etc. All that's required for the horse. Bernie's have been making them for over 120 years and look like continuing to do so. returned next Monday at 7.30, but stay with us to find out how Cat and Alfie's conflict unfolds in EastEnders.